Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with the Pastor. As you could join me this morning, we're going through the book of Acts. We're in Paul's second missionary journey. And we've come to Corinth, a little isthmus that's out there. Uh, we visit Corinth, a lot of neat sights to see uh, at Corinth. Uh, I'll show you one here in a little bit. Uh, but in chapter 18, it says, After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a, name, a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. So Aquila and Priscilla, uh, which are going to be very prominent in the, uh, in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, we see them. They've got a house church meeting in their church. But right now they're in Corinth because Claudius has kicked all the Jews out of Rome. And so it's kind of... Uh, uh, interesting that he, he's there he meets them uh, Paul went to see them and because he was a tent maker as they were he stayed and worked with them then every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue trying to persuade Jews and Greeks so he's going to the synagogue again and he's in Corinth and when Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia remember they're coming from Berea uh, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. So he's having to make a living, so he's making tents. And so he's just, uh, at first, uh, uh, going to the synagogue teaching on, on the Sabbath. But when Paul and Silas get there, he's, he's doing it every day. But when the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own hands. I am clear of my responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. This is very significant. There in Corinth, he goes to the synagogue. He goes there several Sabbaths and starts doing it. And they reject him. They start causing trouble. You remember, it's been the Jews that's caused him trouble in uh, Thessalonica and Berea. Uh, wherever he goes, it's them that's causing problems. So he just basically says, okay, I'm done with y'all. I'm not going to go to the synagogue anymore. I'm just going to go to the Gentiles. Uh, they are hearing my message. They're responding to the gospel, so I'm going to go to them. And I'm not coming to you anymore. Your blood's on your head. And so that's a, that's a change for Paul because he's always gone to the synagogues, but now he's changing. He's not going to. He's going to go to, to, uh, to the Gentiles first. And... Uh, uh, it kind of reminds me of, of Henry Blackaby's Experiencing God study. He says, you want to go to where God is working. Figure out where God's working, then go be part of that. And that's exactly what Paul's done. He's not, God's not working in the Jewish community. And he's kind of wasting his time going to the synagogues. And so he's just going directly to the Gentiles. Because they're not giving him trouble. They're not causing trouble. And every time he goes to the synagogue, they're trying to get him arrested, beaten, or something. And verse 7 says, Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus, Justice, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believe in the Lord. So he says, I'm leaving it, but then here you got the synagogue ruler and his household have received Christ. And many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do not be silent. For I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stays in Corinth a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. Um, and he writes some letters while he's there in Corinth. Uh, the Romans was probably written when he was there. Uh, when Galileo was pro council of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack of Paul and brought him into court. This man they charged is persuading the people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to the Jews, if you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you, but since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, settle the matter yourself. I will not be a judge of such things. So he had them ejected from the court. Then they all turned on Sosthenes, the synagogue ruler, and beat him in front of the court. 
but Galileo show no concern, whatever. So again, the Jews have brought Paul before a court. So this guy's uh, teaching people to worship gods in ways that we don't know. And this Roman pro council just says, hey, that's a religious matter. I could care less. You take care of it. And then they beat uh, Sosthenes, the uh, synagogue leader, right in front of him, and he doesn't do anything about it. Uh, interesting court system back then. But we see Paul there in, in Corinth, and this is one of the places where he does spend a significant amount of time. He spends a year and a half there and developing the church. And I think that's why it bothered him so much when the Corinthians had so much problems later on. The church at Corinth had all kinds of problems. They had sin problems where they were still living in immorality, which was part of their custom there. And they had uh, all kinds of issues. Um, we visited Corinth, and I may show some more pictures tomorrow because we'll still kind of be in Corinth. This is one I found interesting. Uh, that's a, a kind of a, a, a raised spot. And they believe that Paul probably spoke from uh, up there to the crowds. That, that would have been one of the places in the marketplace. And it was a place in the marketplace when somebody was speaking, they would have gotten to him. So Paul probably spoke on top of that. Uh, I, I have a picture of me up there, but I, I didn't, uh, didn't find it. And all, but uh, but but kind of interesting spot. They've got the uh, temple to the goddess up on the top of the hill. Uh, a lot of sexual immorality in Corinth. A lot of wealth in Corinth because it was a port city, a very interesting city, and uh, and the ruins there are, are are quite striking when you go go see them, as well. Uh, so and again, we're going to go next October if anyone would like to go with us, and all. Uh, so that's it for today. We'll talk tomorrow, tomorrow about Aquila and Priscilla and Apollos. So we're going to meet Apollos uh, uh, tomorrow in the scriptures, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. You have a blessed day.